Hi everybody, um, this is Sean and I wanted to answer a question that I get a lot which is just how does HTML work? So HTML is a technology, a uh, hypertext markup language, and it's a technology that we use to structure content on the web. Uh, HTML is the thing that is underneath every website you look at online and it is what gives all the content its structure. And we can look at an example here. Here's PBS Learning Media, which is an educational website. And as you can see, there's a lot of things on this page and there's a lot of interactivity. Um, I can uh, click on a bunch of links. Uh, I have a little uh, carousel going here. Um, I have a pull down area. Uh, it's, it's quite sophisticated, but underneath all of it, if you, if you look at it, is HTML. And so if we use our developer tools, we can use the H we can view the HTML. We can even just view the entire page source in its own tab and really get an idea of what we're talking about when we're looking at HTML here. So all of this is underneath every single website you look at, and it really governs what you see on the site and how uh, you interact with the site. All of these different tags tell the web browser how to treat all of the content on the page. And it's by reading all of these different tags and then rendering them according to set standards uh, that have been decided by you know large groups. That's how HTML gets rendered. So let's take a look at uh, writing a little bit of HTML and see exactly what's going on here. I'm in uh, Code Anywhere and I have a, a page pulled up in my sandbox that is demo.html. And over here on the right side, I have a preview of this demo.html. All HTML files start with an HTML tag. I believe that it is very useful to, um, to always close your tags when you open them. So I like to do that. So every HTML file is wrapped with an HTML tag. And then inside of that, you have two main components to an HTML file, the head and the body. And that is the primary structure of an HTML file. If I save this, and then refresh, I see that there's nothing here, actually. And the reason why there's nothing here is because there's actually no content on this page. All that I've done is set up an empty structure. So I'm going to add just a little bit of content on the page. Uh, in the head, you typically put things that are read by the browser and used by the browser to sort of uh, affect the entire rest of the page. One of the things that you often put in is a title, and the title is what you see like in your bookmarks list or in your tab um, up here. So the title of this page here is Code Anywhere. And if I viewed the page source here, I would see that there's HTML under this just like there is with everything else. Um, I can uh, I can now put a little bit of content in the page, and to do that, I'll just put an H1 uh, with the title of the page so that it's visible, and I will put in a little paragraph. I'm going to save that, and then refresh my preview. And... I see demo page and hello world. So how did this happen? <laughs> well, in the HTML, I put some content in the body and the content in the body is what shows up. And really, I mean, I could just type anything in the body um, and it, it will show up if I, uh, it will show up if I refresh the page. So why, why do I actually need to put in um, any content? Well, Notice if I put in a bunch more text, uh, maybe a picture or an interactive element or something about a cat, maybe you can see that all of this text on the left hand side looks, uh, you know, readable. That's that's how I sort of typed it in with all spaced out and everything. But if I actually view this over on the right hand side, the browser doesn't know what to do with it because there's no markup around any of that other stuff. So it knows to make the heading 
a, look like a heading, and it knows to make the paragraph look like a paragraph, but all this other stuff, it doesn't know what to do with, so it basically just slams it all together into one imaginary paragraph and handles it that way. So if I wanted to, I could, for example, make an unordered list. And inside an unordered list are list items. So I could do that, and that would at least give me a list of things because the browser knows how to handle uh, lists and different structures like lists. So, and you notice that the way the HTML works is that you wrap content with these tags. And every HTML tag has an opening tag and then also a closing tag. And you wrap content with those tags and then the web browser knows what to do with the content that is between those tags. So it was able to turn all of this stuff here into this presentation right there. And so that's what uh, that's what this looks like when we're um, writing HTML and getting it rendered. Now, a lot of tags have additional things that they can do. Um, they require um, some additional configuration and the way that we configure a tag is through the attributes. So it could be that we want to put a link to Google inside of this hello world paragraph. So we could say click here and that would be the text that we want to put the link on. And so we would wrap click here in an A tag. And you'll notice that if we save and then view the page again. When we click here, it didn't really do anything because this A tag doesn't yet have any kind of link attached to it. So the browser doesn't, doesn't know what to do with it. But we can add an href attribute, which is what you call the link in a link tag, in an anchor tag. And that link will point to google.com. And so we'll refresh again, and now it turns blue because the browser is able to say, here's a link tag. Oh, I got a link tag. I expect there to be an href of some kind. Here's my href, and it's able to construct the link. So that's how HTML works. You wrap content in tag with tags. The wrapped content gets formatted according to how the browser knows to interpret that tag. And you modify how tags act by adding in different attributes. So an image tag, for example, has a source attribute. We, um, we have uh, the ability to add IDs and classes to elements as well to give them names so that we can work with them. Uh, and those are also done with attributes. So an ID... Uh, Often you ID your your headings with just the words that are in the heading, and that becomes um, you know good uh, search engine optimization fodder and everything. Uh, we might call this unordered list. We might give it a class um, and call it you know uh, like thing list because it's a list of things, I guess. So we could um, we could do all sorts of things to add more information that then the browser can use or that we can use uh, in conjunction with CSS, which is the way that we affect the visual look and feel of a page. So remember, HTML is a way of marking up content in order to allow the browser to determine how to display that content, how to visually present it on the screen, how to order it, and what kind of functionality to give it. HTML tags wrap content with opening tags and closing tags. HTML tags close with a closing tag that starts with a slash, like this. And HTML tags use attributes, like the href attribute on the anchor tag, to modify the behavior of the tag. And that's basically how HTML works. There's a whole bunch of different 
tags and behaviors that you can use in HTML. And so the real challenge of HTML is getting good with the vocabulary of, of HTML. How many different tags there are to use and the different attributes that you can use with each tag. But the way that HTML works in general is fairly straightforward and you can use it to great effect to create clean content that is easily interpreted by a web browser. And that's a pretty wonderful thing. So thanks for watching. Um, hope that uh, you got some questions answered. And take care. Bye.